Okay, so maybe maybe real quick for for the sake of of the recording and be able to have it, maybe have each of you individually just say like who you are and what your role is in in uh, in Evolve Labs. Um, thanks, Jeff. Uh, Bill Allen with Evolve Lab, uh, president, uh, founder, uh, partner. Started in uh, 2015. Uh, prior to that, was uh, had a, was working in architecture uh, as a BIM manager, and then also working in healthcare and uh, themed entertainment projects uh, prior to Evolve Lab. All right, yep. Ben, your turn. Ben Guler, uh, partner and CTO at Evolve Lab. Uh, joined Evolve Lab in 2019. Before that, I my background is in architecture too, uh, so studied that. Uh, migrated to, towards BIM management in my career, then learned uh, some scripting, Dynamo, Python, C Sharp, and then a lot more of it basically and wanted to do that full time. So that's when I kind of made the transition and, and, and moved to Evolve Lab. So yeah, I just kind of, I still get to do that a lot, which is really fun. Like writing code is, is really cool, but also kind of looking at the industry and there's such a gap there. Like that's kind of, I feel like I'm drawn to that. Like there's so much dent that we could do in the industry. Uh, as it's behind other industries so it's my passion yeah but I, I would love to hear sort of how you guys would explain to somebody what project veris is so whoever wants to take that go for it <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah I, I bill do you want to start or i'll go for it i'll let you take it cool, cool yeah so i mean veris is essentially an ideation tool that is kind of getting built up to be a visualization tool so and it's not just purely visualization, but you could think of it as a lot more than that. Like right now it does that pretty well. Like it kind of renders pretty interesting uh, uh, pictorial images out of something that looks very kind of um, not that great, especially in Revit. Like people don't tend to their materials that much unless they're using their Revit model for actual rendering. And then they kind of, you know, manipulate those materials out of textures and things like that. Um, but essentially with Veras, we could just get the 3D geometry and then via prompt, you could augment and explore different design iterations. And it does a pretty good job at doing that. Uh, beyond that though, is our kind of effort to get it closer to just kind of render exactly what you see in Revit, but just using you know machine learning data to compose lighting and materiality and things like that. So maybe that's in a nutshell, maybe Billy could add to that. I think this is a really, really good answer. I like it, I'm gonna leave it at that. All right, cool. Yeah. So, so then uh, building on that, I guess the, the uh... You know, the was was the initial goal uh, to, to to just create this iterative uh, iterative visualization tool, or, or is the initial goal to also evolve into a, a rendering? I don't want to say engine, but I guess we could say engine to some extent. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're looking at this technology for much more beyond kind of uh, just visualization. Right now, it's there, but we're looking at it of we have other products that we're working on uh, that want to utilize the same kind of uh, uh, um, ideas and same technology where it's generating, you know, like generative design, for example, like generating full plans, layouts. Mm -hmm. So we've had that with kind of evolutionary solvers and meta heuristic solvers that does that pretty interestingly, mm -hmm. but we're looking at kind of growing and using different algorithms to expand its, th those functionalities. And right now kind of Veras is kind of geared towards just that visualization. And that's kind of how we've kind of wrapped it within a product that just kind of does that really well. But the substrate and the technology that's being built underneath and the way we're kind of extending it, that is something that we're, is becoming more foundational to a lot of things that we're doing. So um, the goal, uh, I guess, was kind of just looking at, uh, you know, machine learning and kind of like, that was kind of like, how could we utilize this, you know, emerging technologies within our kind of set of products that we're already developing. And this is kind of like one of the products that uh, was, you know, one of the, the obvious products that we could actually just deliver right now that we could just use it for visualization, but going beyond that. So the vision is much grander than that. And even going to like generating, you know, geometry or, uh, you know, generating textures, materiality, things like that, uh, because, you know, it, it's very possible to do that with this kind of machine learning technology. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because that, you know, one of the, and, and hopefully I'll have this all pieced together. Um, during the video is, you know, you know, I've, I've obviously been testing it out a lot. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've been testing out now is, is, you know, first there's getting that, that, that comfort in, in how the tool works, right? Like, you know, go, going through, going through prompts and the settings and tweaking and seeing what the result does. Right. And, and it really just seems like it's just trial and error at the beginning to just get a feel for how your different, different settings and different prompts will react to it. But then, you know, and that's, that, that was using, um, using, you know, uh, uh, 
a more developed model that had some materiality, it had some detail, you know, it's pretty renderable uh, model uh, at the start. And then what I've been testing out recently is taking more of like a massing model, right? So a white model um, with with very little detail um, and seeing what what it can. And I've already noticed that there's still um, there's still some rules in place that I think, you know, even from that, that you want in order to get something out of of it. I feel like if it's all white with no separate materiality, right? It, 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 the, the, you can see how the, the machine learning is, is registering the different pieces versus like no. the geometry itself. <laughs> and so, and so right. I guess, and so, so the end goal, it, it's interesting. Um, would you say that the end goal would be a, a, a rendering engine that, um, not only can iterate, but also produce a, a, a high quality rendering of what you, what you've produced, if, if that makes sense, like, like without iteration. Is, is that right. is that part of it? Yeah, that is definitely part of it. Like for the Varex product, like we're trying to get it as close as we can to respect the geometry, looking at high resolutions, looking at, um, because we're in Revit, specifically for Revit, this is a unique thing where we have access to metadata. We have, you know, mm. curtain walls, walls, right, we have right. descriptions, we have verbiage, we have information in the data that we can extract. Because of that, it, it's, it kind of lends it to, it lends itself to, to kind of be used for this technology uh, mm -hmm. in a very intuitive way. So, um, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. And I think, I think to me, that's what, that, that's what drew me to it. I mean, I, long before I heard of Virus, you know, I've, I was messing around with Dolly and, 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 and I've also been messing around with chat GPT on that side of it, but, but I've definitely messed around with Dolly for quite a bit, you know, just having fun over there and, and, you know, it's great, but you know, the, 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 what you mentioned there sort of maintaining your geometry is also an ex extremely valuable piece of this, in my opinion, right? Because you can, the ability to iterate certain things while keeping your design intent or something is, is huge, whether it's just the background or whether it's pieces of the foreground. Um, so maybe without having to show and tell, maybe some tips and tricks for for whether it's model setup or whether it's um, prompting is you know, sort of maybe some ideas since you probably spent way more time than I have just messing around with all the settings. Maybe some ideas of of what, um, you know, when you're developing a model or, or what can we expect you know, like I said, I mean, a perfect example is the massing model. I, I, I had a massing model, it was all white. All I did was make um, one face of it blue where I knew there might be glass and it completely changed the results, right? Everything was white. I just put some blue there and changed the results. And so like maybe something like that, uh, you know, some tips and tricks on the model side and then maybe some tips and tricks on the prompting side. Because uh, all I've done right now is I'm, I'm using your prompts basically from the forum and manipulating them to get a sense of like, you know, how you're structuring it. But it seems like this is a wide range of how you can actually use these prompts. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, the actual materiality does get taken into account regardless of like your settings mm. to a certain degree. Uh, if you have like, you know, very like the first slide is like the creativity strength. If that one's maxed out, like it uses the least amount, but it still if you like were to blink your eye, or, like to blur your eye and like make a blurry mm. one pixel image of that, that still gets taken into account. So the, the overall average, if we're to average the whole image into one like pixel, let's say, and that mm. pixel is darker or lighter, mm -hmm. that matters basically. So mm -hmm. like that, that's some, those are some things that we want to kind of help out other users too with like making that more, a bit more obvious. Mm. Uh, for example, like if you wanted to make a light scene, like you probably can't get it out of prompting. You have to kind of make your sky and, and Revit darker mm. and then, okay, now that it's darker, now it could actually, you can make it brighter a little bit, but in, on average, it needs to kind of have like the average color, if you will, of the image to be kind of within a certain kind of range. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one thing. The other thing I've noticed, and again, this is something that we're kind of working on and trying to make it more intuitive, even, even the UI and kind of the settings, how it's kind of being presented. But a lot of people, I think I've seen kind of max out like all the sliders or something like that. And there's actually a correlation between like one slider versus the other. And mm -hmm. we're trying to kind of highlight that. Okay. Like if you're going max on this slider, you should go with this slider, not so maxed out mm -hmm. because you're going to get pixelation. Or if you kind of lower this slider, you should go max that on the other slider because like you can, because then you'll get more of the, more out of the process. There's, there's a threshold, right? That, that one, right. one reacts to the other. Yeah. Yeah. That right. makes and sense. Then, but go, right. go ahead. Sorry. And then prompting too, like prompting matters a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you know, you can have like prompts that are, uh, you know, kind of a run on like sentence. It's good to break them down with comma separated values. Like, okay, this is like, this is peace. And I want this idea and this idea, and then just kind of separate them. Um, I found that like having more prompts is actually good. Other people mm -hmm. have said the opposite, but um, um, in my testing, I, I, I disagree. Uh, another thing to that too is uh, misspellings. I've seen people misspell mm -hmm. words. That's not good. Like if you 
have a, a word that's almost right, then maybe there are misspellings on train data that have that same thing, but there's so much data on that that it will produce some kind of mm-hmm. pixelization or something like that. So again, those are some things um, that I'd mentioned. And, and yeah, no, and 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 part, part part of me is I'm actually mining data for my information when I make the video too. So some of this may not be in it, but I just I just I'm curious now because I spent so much time in it. Like okay. things things that interest me are like if in a prompt, and this is getting in the weeds, but I'm curious, you know, saying exterior versus facade versus veneer, you know, those kind of things. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter, but maybe it does. Uh, is it, Do you know, like, like, and, and the order of those things, if you said, if you're, if you're prompting, like you said, comma, comma delineation makes sense, maybe like each little statement. Um, but does it make sense to do like building stuff first, then background, foreground, you know, that, or does it, does it matter if you're comma separating it? Yeah, not really through comments yeah. separating it. I haven't seen a, a difference. Um, I mean, I tend to kind of like first describe what I'm saying, mm-hmm. then like quality, and then maybe uh, you know environment, like yeah, or maybe the other way around, like what I'm saying, environment, and then quality. Like I want a certain right. aesthetic or a certain like um, like look and feel, things like that. Yeah, I, I think the tip with uh, um, you know the the, the the having some sort of pixel that determinant is, is a good, I think that's a really good mm. tip that I'll definitely probably use that piece and even extract it into more of my explanation. Cause I I've noticed that as well. Like yeah, as much as you, you know, you want to just have like a white model and say, put all the stuff on it. You still need to sort of guide the computer to do it. And I think that also goes on the whole overarching discussion about AI and, and how much it's is or isn't going to take our jobs. I think there's, I think that's a perfect <laughs> example of how like it's a computer and you still need to sort of, right guide it and, and that the, i think the white the white the blue facade is a perfect example where no matter what i did i couldn't get glass to the where i wanted how i wanted right. to until i just made it blue and then right away the the, the ai knew like oh this must be where it is same thing with like the <laughs> forest the right yeah <laughs> with the forest you know i was trying to get backgrounds and i was trying to get like a dense forest around it and it kept going in the in the you know the the alpha right so the background mm-hmm. was really going through but i had a lot of topo in between and stuff and it wasn't filling in I'm like, well, why is this happening? And all I had to do was put yeah. like four or five RPC trees, you know, somewhere yeah. in the foreground. Exactly. And then immediately yeah, I was like, oh yeah, let me fill in shit here. And so like when you start, you know, when you start seeing that, it, it makes sense that, you know, you're right. not, it's not doing it all for you. It's, it's your right. talent, you're guiding it through the path. And I think that's probably, uh, probably the best way to, to help right. people understand it as they're sort of trial and erring. And that's exactly what I'm figuring out as I go through. It's most of your settings in the form, you always turned off edges for your, for your realistic views. Um, I'm curious cause I, I've, I've been playing with that on and off and I, I kind of got different results, not too dramatically different results, but, um, what, what is the, is there, is there a reason that, that sure. you suggest that? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you could keep them on and you, mm-hmm. you'll see like the results are pretty similar, mm-hmm. but if you wanted to kind of really, I think there's one of the posts where I'm trying to just exactly what I'm seeing in Revit, just mm-hmm. make it look real. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And you're using a lot of the Revit textures and all that. So for mm-hmm. that. You will see those edges in there. If you so, if you lower that that slider oh, down, then you'll mm-hmm. you'll you know those will come through. Uh, maybe not expressed the same way, but they might have like a darker edge. Like it might mm-hmm. just have an effect, basically the edges. And maybe you want that, so maybe we could keep it on. Like maybe actually yeah, yeah. you want <laughs> that to be a little bit darker, more shadowy mm-hmm. around the edges for some reason. Uh, mm-hmm. And you can explore with that. But I've I have I kind of wanted those to be off, and so I. I've, I've gotten the results I wanted to get out of it by turning those on off. And that setting basically that setup helps with like everything else. So it's like, it made like, that's also an account, maybe an economy there where it's like, I'm just making that post and then it helps for all sorts mm-hmm. of settings. You could test at it and get different results. Yeah. So, so on that note, uh, you know, would you suggest if, if you're, if you're not, you know, doing the example I was talking about with more like massing, but if you're doing more of a, uh, you have a, a fully texturized model with a lot of detail and, and you're, you know, uh, and you want to start iterating, I don't know, the exterior facade, let's say, um, but you want the model to maintain, generally maintain the massing. Uh, but in general, the, we're, in your workflow, are you are you trying to get a decent re- rendering without prompts first before you start prompting? Like, is that an important thing? Like, like if you get the settings nice to the point where um, it's kind of reflecting what you expect it to before changing anything, is that a, is that a, is that a good approach to take? And then from there, maybe is when you start prompting and, and modifying so at least you know you have a base or does that not really matter yeah we're actually developing that further uh, like what's the process like yeah how can we actually finesse things uh i've actually started with prompts i've always kind of okay. but we obviously do want to have like a baseline that looks okay you know without any mm-hmm. problems it's a, it's a building it's architecture we're in revit 
we already know so much already from Revit of, right. of you know what what we're kind of dealing with. Uh, it's not like a, a diamond ring or something or something that's like very different because of the software right. we're using. And so, um, so that's just something that we are we worked on to make sure that you know that works already, like just out of the box. Mm -hmm. But like to get better results and finesse them, I've always kind of I've gotten that via via prompting. So like adding more mm -hmm. prompts and describing what I'm seeing uh, in the scene or what, what I would like to see in the scene. Uh, mm -hmm. things like that and then just finessing the problem like adding more to it or removing from it like i added this one but i didn't like how it turned out so i'll remove that mm -hmm. and then like so a lot of times if i put like gray sky it might make the whole picture gray and like oh it's affecting like a lot more or if there's mm -hmm. no sky but i i put like like you know blue sky it might kind of because illuminate you know illumination has an effect on the, the environment right. it might make things at a, at a blue hint even though there's like no sky in the image so those kind of things like i might not like that effect and i might just play with the prompting once i kind of have a more elaborate prompt yeah uh, it's something just i wanted but, to add real quick ahead, yeah. sorry uh something i don't think had been mentioned yet was the concept of adding the parentheses to words as well. Hmm. Ben, I don't know if you can comment on that, but I don't know if it's on the forums, but the more you put parentheses around specific words within your text prompt, there'll be more of a metric or a weight to those specific words, right. and it'll give more influence to your rendering from doing that uh, exercise. So, so you can wait. So, you, so you can you can basically wait part of the prompt more than another one, and, and it's forced. Exactly. So, if you have like a a stylistic approach or something, or 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 I don't know, warm cabin or something like that. You can put that in parentheses and that'll, it'll try to hold that as, as the stronger prompt of the rest of them. That's right. Yeah. Because I think earlier, Jeff, you were talking about like, does it matter the order in which you put, mm, you know, right. the text prompt. Yeah. And I also noticed that it doesn't necessarily matter so much to me, the order, but if I'm not quite getting the results I want and I'm like, well, I want more of this thing. I'll put mm. like parentheses around that. And then it'll try to give more weight to that. Hmm. I, uh, I, I use the golden hour a lot. It looks pretty fun for exterior <laughs> shots. Yeah, and, and it's funny. I was even playing with like dusk, dawn, and I saw you had golden hour written in one of them, and like and like sunrise, sunset. And it, it is interesting to see just those terms how right. different how different the the results are. And That's so right. uh, it, it's interesting that you said sort of misspelling is an obvious one. Um, is there any other like do's and don'ts for the prompting that you guys have noticed? Like as far or is it pretty pretty wide open? Yeah, I think it's pretty wide open i think some people again this kind of goes to, you've already mentioned it but you had to put an rcp tree like if someone's trying to kind of get something some yeah. kind of content that's not already there it's it Challenging. might kind of find a spot that might look like it so that i'll do yeah. that right you what you're talking about mm -hmm. but the geometry needs to be there like yeah. you kind of have to have which is really great because then you gives you some authorship actually of, mm -hmm. of of that actual rendition like where it matters if you're modeling in a certain way or if you're kind of you know if you added those objects or if you didn't and they don't have to be you know accurate objects just representation something that kind of you know gives an idea yeah yeah and there's i think one thing i'd comment too jeff earlier you mentioned dolly and you know um some people are using mid-journey as well one of the, the differentiators with Verus is specifically that like the orientation of the building do you have foreground have you modeled trees mm -hmm. and so that's one of you know the things that we're trying to include within the software to be able to have some control over that where some of these other tools are purely text prompt based and yeah. then you don't get to have so much control over orientation or whether where a tree lands, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And th and that's even when I've messed with Dolly, even like uploading my own renderings, that's basically, you know, that's one of the first things I try doing, right? Is upload your own rendering and doing prompts. And, and it, yeah, it definitely, it, it, it made varieties of things, but it was always kind of, you know, it, it lost a lot of the, the original content in my opinion and you know if if you tried doing something a little a little more dramatic and so that's to your point that's that is i think that's what's really cool about this is you could you know if even if you don't want to model out a, a an, an ionic column you could put a a, a round column right. in the image and say ionic column in the front and it might actually generate it in the location you want and that's what i think is really neat is, is you're, you're you're again you're steering steering the, the 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 computer to do it which is which is super cool Awesome. Well, Sweet. thank you guys. I appreciate right. it. I appreciate yeah, you jumping on and being flexible. Yep. Of course. Yeah. And I'll reach out for sure.